Earlier this summer, this film, From Women to Men, I'm a woman. was published I am a online. Woman. I am a woman. Where a group of women apologize for how they've hurt men. I am a woman. Who has hurt men. Who has hurt men. Who has hurt men. I dream of a time when we can truly empower ourselves by owning our part of the mess and bring an end to the cycle of hurting and blaming. It went viral with hundreds of thousands of views online. News articles as far afield as Israel and Belgium and some very polarized reactions. So the impulse for making this film came out of, of a deep longing for healing of the wound between the genders. Um, the link to my working experience, my work background, um, yeah, there is one for sure. I've been working as a mediator for more than 10 years now. Um, so in conflict resolution work, helping people to get out of very stuck and dif difficult situations and conflicts. And my experience in this work is that the patterns we are used to think in, either or, either I'm wrong or you must be wrong, either I'm right or I must be guilty, either I'm the victim or I'm the perpetrator. It's always either or and we get stuck in that and that this is never true in the end and that it does not lead anywhere. And my experience in this conflict resolution work is that it's really always the moment where both sides start to look also at their own contribution to the conflict, that something starts to shift and that a new way out of it and really something new can be created and can happen. For me, it really, it really put its finger on something that I've never seen addressed in the kind of in the public debate. It's not, it's not to say like this, this is the full truth, but it's like this was an aspect of the truth that no light has been shone on. I have a lot of friends who are activists, a lot of uh, feminist friends, both men and women, and I knew the kind of reactions that the film was going to get. So. So there was a sense of like, okay, this is going to take some courage to, to do this because a lot of people are not going to like it. I was an activist myself for a long period of time and very passionate about making the world a better place and doing loads of things. And as I started my own personal growth work, I became aware of a lot of my own shadows. If this film doesn't challenge me when I participate, I shouldn't participate because I have to say something here, because I've never said it before. And I've never experienced before that I'm allowed to say it without being torn, without being blamed, without being the witch. And what has the reaction been so far from putting the film out into the world? Most of them, and most of the feedback that I get um, directly is um, very touched voices from men and women. Men who say that they started to cry, that they had tears in the eyes because they have never heard this and that it felt so healing to them. And then there are very critical and uh, controversial reactions too from both sides, from men and women. Um, from the women's side, what comes most as fear or critic is um, an understanding of the film as if we said it's all our fault. I understand the anger and rage that can come up with that. And if we truly said that in the film, if we truly said it's all our fault, uh, uh, you are all excused. <laughs> Any abusive behavior from man towards woman is excused because it's all our fault. If we truly said that, <laughs> rage and anger would be the right reaction, I think. Um, but we don't. We don't say that. So what are you saying? What we are saying is, let's have a look to what we are doing to contribute to the situation that is as it is, and we want to change it. 
So your film has come out almost a year after Me Too, but it takes a very different perspective, an almost polar opposite perspective to Me Too. Why do you think that is? And is it a response to Me Too? When I've been writing this text, it really came out of a moment where it came out of me. This was in August um, 2017, and I think Me Too started in September, October. So it was actually before Me Too. Uh, it had nothing, nothing to do with it. Unless you can say there, is a, there was a lot of stuff in the field and what I brought up is one perspective. So it's not a response to Me Too, it's another perspective. I think that what is important in the Me Too is that women started to speak up and to say, I won't hide anymore because I'm ashamed of what happened to me. I'm going to tell you and I'm going to say it's not okay. It's very important. But I, I feel that there is really one perspective missing and it's interesting that this perspective came to me to write a text about it before Me Too even started. But when I look to it at now, because the film has come out after Me Too, of course, I see it as another perspective to the whole picture. And an important one because it's really not very present in the media and in society so far. Some of the comments online have been kind of, the, the tone has been, you're letting women down, you're betraying women in some way. Have you seen that and what do you make of that? Like you, we are the women who betray women, right? It's so interesting because when I did this film and after shooting it, even more than before, I felt I'm saying this for myself. I'm saying this because I embrace all my mistakes and all my shadows. At least I try. And when I hear we are betraying women, no way. It's so much self-love. At the same time, I somehow like it because what I really don't like is every human being with a vagina is, is, has this duty to love every other woman on earth like the sister goddess. I think it's so refreshing if so many women don't want to be my sisters because they don't like me. It's so refreshing. It's like, what happens, ladies? Come on, we have different opinions. That's not a real problem. We have real problems out there. We have real problems in our bed. Let's deal with real stuff. So when women say, you betray women, I think you are the one fighting against my freedom in this very moment. No fucking way. I learned my stuff. That's what I would say. A lot of people look at Me Too, which started last October, and this kind of message that you're putting out, they feel is too early because it's only now after many years that women are finding their voices, are setting their boundaries, are speaking to the things that have happened to them, and then to immediately come in and, and say, well, we need to look at our stuff as well. To many people, especially many women, I think they feel that this is too early. What do, what do you say to that? Yes, I have heard that too. You know, I can see that um, on a personal level. Of course, I can be in a deep process of just starting to look at, to, to allow, for example, memories come back of experienced abuse, to allow my wounds to open up, to feel them, to truly feel them. And I can be completely absorbed by that. And then being asked to be bothered about men's wounds and to own my stuff could be far too much in that very moment. And at the same time saying, while I have not healed my wounds yet, and even on a collective level, while as long as we women have not completely healed our wounds, we should not look at our shadow and take responsibility for our part, is stupid or even dangerous, because that will, then, then we will not change anything. I think it's not either or, it must be both. I have to care for my healing and for my wounds, and it's so important. And I have to look into my shadow part and what I'm doing, because otherwise I will never truly empower myself. I will never access my natural power. And while I'm trying to heal my wounds, I'm acting out of my shadow towards men in a way that they will continue the toxic behavior towards women. And we will 
get more wounding and it, it will just continue. So I think if we truly want to change something, if we really want to do a new step, we need both. Care for our wounds and take responsibility for our shadow. So something I've been struck by with the reactions that people are having in is there's a lot of discomfort around this issue and there's something that I know from my personal growth work, my own journey, is that that is the essence of shadow work. Like the definition is like you don't want to look there, you don't want to go there, that's why it's gone into the shadow. And the, the beauty of it or, or the healing is that if you have the courage to look and inquire into that and own it, own those really uncomfortable sides that actually, you know, we, we don't want to acknowledge. It's the irony of so often the things that we least want to say are the things that breed connection, are the things that create healing. And I really believe that, I, I know from personal experience that that's true in one-on-one in -on -one relations with humans. And I really believe that society, socially what's happening in society is just a larger manifestation of that. I apologize for the lack of empathy you then encounter with your partners and wives. When we suddenly want you to show feelings and understand ours, I sent out the poem or the text, the message uh, to various women's networks asking who wants to participate and um, I had a lot of very powerful and enthusiastic responses. Not only, oh yes, maybe I will participate, but really a thank you for putting words to that and this is so much needed and I want to be part of it. Um, and so we came together in different filming days and did not only have the filming but also huge processes to go through because it was not easy for all of us. Um, the women chose what they wanted to say. They chose the parts they were touched most of or they felt they wanted to own. And most of them chose the most difficult things for them. Of course I said that's, that one is tough. It's tough to say that. And I feel resistance also to saying it, but I feel it's so true and I want to own it. I want to apologize for all the mixed messages you get from us women when we do everything we can to seduce you and then end up blaming you for being too horny and only wanting to have sex. Many women reported afterwards their experience and many of us, including me, we're not only exhausted, but even feeling like, like we were going to be sick, like falling sick. Different kinds, stomach ache, headache, migraine, whatever. A lot of different symptoms showed up. Um, nightmares also, not being able to sleep. And it lasted only one day and one night. And I had so many feedbacks of, wow, the next day I woke up and I felt light. I felt fresh, I felt more alive than ever. I had the feedback of, I watched in the mirror and I, for the first time in my life I felt that I love myself. Um, women reported that they started to apologize personally to men of their past or in their present life for things and said, wow, I did never imagine how much that was freeing myself. I felt lighter and lighter and more and more self-love. And many said, I felt so empowered. I felt so, I felt my power as a woman for the first time. So it was a quite amazing process in the end. Why do you think that happened? I think, and it was, the experience was far stronger than I expected, to be honest. Um, I think we cannot truly love ourselves and we cannot truly empower ourselves, truly access our natural power that we all have without also owning our shadow and taking responsibility for this part of ourselves. And I think this is what happened. And it was amazing to experience that. What do you hope men will get from watching this? I hope they get the most self-love from it. And I think men recovering in their self-love is the only real job that they need to get done if they want to get a job done, but I, I don't see a deeper 
healing point or a deep, deeper wound in the collective masculine soul than lack of self-love because they really didn't get a, an appreciating environment. And if they restore a gram of real self-love, they will treat women like goddesses. They don't have a problem with hating women. They have a problem with loving themselves. People won't act like the good beings that they are when we treat them like shit. The more we criticize men, the more we just misuse our right to criticize them, to belittle them. If we keep doing that, we directly lead to more hating of women, more misogyny, more, more rape culture. We lead to more of that. And we know it. We know it from psychology. We know it from pedagogic. We know it from teachers. We know it from trauma therapy. We just don't use what we know. One of the main criticisms of the film is the idea of a collective apology, saying that you can't apologize for someone else. So you could apologize for your own stuff, but not apologize for all women, for example. Which is very true. <laughs> Of course, I cannot apologize for anyone else. I cannot take responsibility for anyone else, for sure. Um, and yet, I think it's not so easy to make a difference between collective and personal and individual. There is no collective if not expressed through the individual. And as we are social creatures, there is no individual without the collective. Um, and I want, can give an example. For myself, I have found myself many times being thinking and or talking in a quite judgmental ways about men. When I heard myself speaking these words, these words coming out of my mouth, I heard my mother talk, I heard my grandmother talk, I heard my great-grandmother talk. So I realized it's not only my own experiences and my own herd, it's a learned pattern already, it's out of the herd of farmer women. So how can you really, dif dif uh, how can you really make a, a difference between the two levels? And what has surprised you most about the reaction to the film? Hmm. Yeah, we have not spoken of the man's negative reactions yet, and that is an answer to that question because that surprised me most. Not that there might be negative reactions, but I have learned, thanks to the reactions to the film, about the men's rights movement and the men going their own way movement. I had not heard of that before. Can you, talk, can you, explain, can you say what some of the comments were? Yes, just, exactly. Yeah. The, the, the reactions were, for example, sorry ladies, it's too late, I will never trust you again, um, or this is all not true, you have been paid for it, or um, you're doing this only to manipulate us again. So a lot of mistrust. Um, some also even just, just hateful. Um, it shows to me how deep man's wounds are. Um, and in the first place, it was painful to get these reactions to a message that came out of my heart um, that was meant really, that is meant really, honestly. Um, it was painful in the first place. In the second place, I thought, wow, it's, it's amazing that it comes up, that it becomes visible, because it's so important. That shows how important this message is and how important the work is, how important healing is and this wounding of man and of woman, actually. And there have been quite a few comments, especially on the YouTube film, of men saying exactly that, sorry ladies, it's too late, or you're just trying to manipulate us again. Do you, what was your reaction to that? I say sorry as honest as I can do it today. Leave it or take it. And it's interesting that in those comments, especially from men, it's like, it's not good enough. Where I think, but that's the best that I can give. And this comment is hopefully not the best that you can give. Because there is a standard that I set. And I don't, I don't go down to this level of, of hating and blaming. So. Yes, 100% of the mess between the sexes is in my hands and 100% is in your hands. And I will never ever take 1% of your responsibility and say, oh, I'm the bad one. I'm not the bad one. 
So it's like, what do you want to get rid of with this kind of sorry, it's too late. They don't even mean sorry. It's, it's even the word sorry. It's so cynic. It's so, it's uninteresting for me somehow. What do you hope the film will achieve? This. <laughs> Peace and love and ecstasy for everybody. Um, I think what I hope what this film affects is a deeper sense for both sexes of how complex this challenge is and that we really have to do our homework. Everybody cries for the, the one, for the big love, for the best relationship. Then do your fucking homework. It will hurt, of course. My hope is that we can truly do a step into a new dialogue and co-creation where women start to say, I love being a woman again. And a man can say, I love being a man. And we all can say we love being humans. I, I dream of a time where we can truly allow ourselves to love again. And that is impossible without allowing ourselves to be vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs>